Hello YouTube, I'm here to show you guys how to use open broadcaster software instead of fraps or anything else like that to uh, record any type of gameplay or anything else that you're working on. Um, the reason why I like using open broadcaster as opposed to fraps or anything else like that, first of all you get much better frames, it's a lot less intensive on your system. And second of all, you have a lot more options. So, <clears throat> uh, excuse me. So, for example, if you're switching between desktop modes or uh, have multiple games open or you're trying to uh, broadcast a tutorial, even kind of like this, uh, obviously something a little bit more involved like EDK or something, um, this seems to be kind of the go to uh, software for this. The reason for this is your uh, scenes and sources. But uh, before I get into that, uh, I'm just going to do a basic rundown of uh, kind of how to get the client set up for local recording as compared to uh, streaming to Twitch and things like that. So first thing you want to do is fire open your web browser and uh, go to obsproject.com. You want to grab your broadcaster software and install it. Um, if you don't know how to do that, chances are you shouldn't be broadcasting tutorials. So Anyways, what you would do is you would come down once it's all installed and you want to go to your settings. Under your settings, it's very, very verbatim, easy to use. Um, language, obviously, English. Now, all your stuff is always on the left. So under encoding, you don't generally want to play with this too, too much, especially because you're doing everything locally. Um, other than that, you don't really play with that. Uh, broadcast settings. This is where it gets important. Now, it'll by default, it'll be on live stream and your screen will have a lot more options on here. I don't want to click this button because I don't want to reveal my uh, stream key. So what you want to do is select file output only. And your file path is where it basically saves the video of your stream. You're basically recording everything to a file. So for myself, I have it set up to a one of my spare drives. Uh, now, start stream hotkey and stop stream hotkey. You want to set these up uh, basically as something that you won't forget. I have mine saved as the same thing as uh, Shadowplay for NVIDIA. Um, that way I always know if I'm doing something and I need to stop, I can just hit a button and it's all good. Uh, no, I don't want to apply changes. Video. Um, video adapter, again, if you don't know what that is, you probably shouldn't be broadcasting tutorials. Your base resolution. Now, if you have multiple monitors, you can go between monitor one, you would have a list of all your different monitors, set custom resolutions and things like that. Now, for downscaling, if you're streaming, generally you should always be going down to 720p. There's no real reason to be streaming in full 1080 HD. Now, because I'm streaming everything locally and I'm going to be uploading to YouTube later, I tend to keep it at 1080 so that way people have the option of viewing things in high resolution on YouTube. So I keep the FPS limiter at 30. You don't really need anything else higher than that unless you're doing any recording of some really high action stuff. Now, audio. Your desktop audio device is basically what is using game music. So the, the application that you choose to record or things like that or your monitor you generally want to leave that as default. Now your microphone or, and auxiliary device is what you want to be talking through. So that's your microphone. Myself, I always come in here and double check this because for some reason, I think it's because mine's plugged in through a hub, it'll reset itself to default all the time and it won't be there. So you want to make sure that your headset's properly adjusted on there and you'll see your sound levels move around right here. If you hit preview stream, which I can't do that at the moment, it'll stop the stream. So you can see on there, that's the levels. And then on the right, you have your game music. So this is just a very basic mixer on if you're opening a program with sound, you always want to dial back the sound on the game just a little bit. So that way people can hear you talk and they're not struggling to hear you over, you know, orcs getting their brain smashed in with an axe or crazy gunfire. So now as per advanced, again, you don't really want to play with this too much. You're, uh, X264 CPU preset should always be a very fast. That's pretty much the only thing in here that I've ever heard of to be a big deal. Uh, noise gate. Generally, you don't want to play with this unless you have issues with a loud environment. Basically, what this does is it won't start recording or accepting your voice until a certain uh, decibel threshold. So if you always have, say, a fan in your room that's always very loud or things like that, you could bump your... Uh, noise gate settings so it won't record unless you're speaking louder than that found that fan but again it's one of those things you shouldn't really be doing anyways 
So, which brings us to the bread and butter, so to speak, of the Open Broadcaster software. We have scenes and sources. Basically, the best way to think about this in the most non-confusing way is you have scenes. Think of that kind of like uh, an organization of what you want to record. And sources is the more specifically the thing that you're trying to record. So, for example, under scenes, I have just the basic scene, which has a source of monitor capture. So this is what I have active at the moment, which is scene. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to add in, say, a webcam feed of myself somewhere over here or something like that, um, I don't have a webcam at the moment, so I'm apologizing it won't be able to show up. But uh, all you do is you right-click in this area, hit Add, and then you have things, if you read them, Window Capture, Monitor, monitor Capture, which is what I'm using at the moment. You can throw in a static image or a slideshow, static text, game capture device, or game capture. So if you wanted to throw in, say, your cam, you, it would obviously be a video capture device. So you'd hit that, name it um, webcam one, or just whatever you want. Hit OK, and then you have this device selection menu pops up. Now, for your drop-down menu, this is where you would have your... Uh, this is where you would normally have your webcam present. Uh, again, myself, I don't have one on there. I was messing around with some IP cam stuff, but uh, that's where it would be. And then you have all your basic options in here. You can configure whether or not to use that as an audio input device, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, you can use it to flip your images, point filtering, opacity is basically if you want it to be a little bit see-through and things like that. So this is where you play around with all those different settings. And then you would hit OK, and then it would pop up right here. You just hit a check mark to enable it, and then it would pop up. A uh, nice thing about uh, Open Broadcaster as well is this little preview window in here. Um, you would actually see the uh, webcam pop up. Now, it looks like this is just a straight video stream, but you can actually grab what would be considered a widget of that cam, and you can move it around on the screen. Um, it avoids a lot of the... Uh, Sometimes you're playing funky games where the basic presets of like uh, top left, bottom left, top right, etc. Um, they're always covering something important in the game. So you can just grab that and manually drag it out of the way. Therefore, it eliminates the issue. So always keep that in mind that this little video preview is also an editor. So nice little handy trick. Now, Cam, um, under the scene... Whoop, See, I can't select the uh, different scene on here. I actually lose my stream. Um, this is basically, you have different profiles of different settings that you want to be using at a given time. So under scene, which is what I'm using at the moment for monitor capture, you could say have a different scene under here. So add scene. Let's call this um, super awesome gameplay with a 4 in it because I'm lazy and I'm not going to change it. Now I had to switch back to here because it automatically selects that but um, inside of that you could have say a game or different capture and things like that. As you get to play around with the scenes and sources it'll make a lot more sense. I know it's kind of uh, goofy that I can't switch to these scenes to show you the differences but I'm using OBS to do this. Normally for a tutorial like this I would have to res kind of uh, result myself to using a, one of those shittier capture programs like uh, Fraps or something like that because this is currently in use. So just for uh, basic things like a game, we'll show you how to do that. So what you want to do, um, let's say I wanted to stream Age of Empires 2 HD. What you have to do is you have to open that first then just alt tab out of it. Now, the screen might not reflect this properly on here because I have it set to monitor capture, but when you go to a full screen game, it won't really grab that properly. So what you have to do in order to fix that is you're gonna come down to your sources inside of your currently active scene, you'll right click, hit add, and then you'll go to a window, window capture. Once you select that, you can call it age to HD. Now, you'll have a window capture prompt that'll pop up, 
And right at the top, it'll have a window with a drop-down option of the currently open windows. That's why it's important to have the game open first so you can select it. So once you have it selected, you can hit refresh if it's not there. You have multiple options on that point if you want the entire window, just the excuse me, inter, inner window. So for myself, I always select entire window, um, capture your mouse cursor, obviously. Uh, there's layered windows. Again, if you don't know what something is, just hover over it and it'll tell you what's going on. So I'm going to select the Age of Empires 2 HD edition and hit OK. Um, now you can see that that is currently active in my sources. The background's glitched out right now. This window is actually closed, but that's because I have this set up to only record this game. So what I'm going to do right now is click off the monitor capture and the screen will temporarily go black. But once I switch to age two, it'll come right back up and we'll be able to talk to each other again. There we go. Okay, so now we're in the game, and basically anything that goes on, it's only going to be recording anything inside of the Age of Empires 2 screen. So this is where it's nice that if you're doing multiple programs or multiple games open at the same time, um, you could either use the monitor capture, or if you want to be very selective with what you're streaming, you can set up those different windows and be able to dynamically switch to them on the fly. So it's nice to be able to do that um, without having any... Uh, extra screen bleed going on. So in short, once you're done recording your tutorial or recording your gameplay or anything else like that, you can go to your output file once you hit stop streaming and then you can uh, edit it and throw in any type of intro or anything else that you'd like to do and uh, you can trim it if you made a mistake or things like that and basic video editing stuff. Th that I'm not too good at. I might do a tutorial later on if I uh, become a little bit more pro uh, proficient at it. So, Either way, this is how to use open broadcaster software in order to record different things. So have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.